So this is a I think this is a, our last week where we are talking about altar at the marketplace. We have already spoken the hearts altar, family altar, nation altar. Now it's marketplace altar. What's mark marketplace? Marketplace is just outside the church. In your job, outside your home, where you do, you, you transact your business, where you, you spend your time outside your home, your church. We call that marketplace. Marketplace is the place where you normally uh, spend your day, evening, you come back home. People who work in hospitals, hospitals are the marketplace. People who work in a mall, shopping mall, they are working in the marketplace. People who are at soccer or stadium, football stadium, they are at marketplace. So at school, this is marketplace outside the church. It's called marketplace. So when we use this, this word marketplace, don't think that it's just where we go to shop things only, no. Where you spend your time uh, before returning home, that's a marketplace. The place of working, the working place, this is marketplace. So we, how we can also bring the, the, the altar at the marketplace. Let us read in the book of Nehemiah. The book of Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 3 up to 5. The book of Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 3 up to 5. And Nehemiah said to the king, May the king live forever. Why should my face not be sad when the city, the place of my father's tombs lies waste and its gates are burned with fire? Then the king said to me, what do you request? Listen here carefully. The king said to Nehemiah, what do you request? So I prayed to God of heaven. Verse 5. And I said to the king, if it pleases the king and if your servant has found favor in your sight I ask that you send me to Judah to the city of my father's tombs that I may rebuild it by reading these three verses, we understand that Nehemiah had a note of prayer in the king's palace. Do you think he has an altar? Do you think he has a place to pray? I don't think so. But when he was talking with the king, when Nehemiah was discussing with the king, what happened? The Bible says he prayed the God of heaven. Verse 4. Then the king said to me, what do you request? You see, they were in discussion. They were discussing. In this discussion, 
Nehemiah, in one hand, he was talking with king. You understand? On the other hand, he was praying the God of heaven. Praise the Lord. This is an altar of prayer everywhere you are. Talking with the king at the, at the same time speaking with God. This ability to speak with someone and at the same time to pray you can do this only if you have an altar in your heart. And this whole altar in your heart will be manifested at the marketplace for you to be able to establish an altar at the marketplace you must become first you must have the altar in your heart you must be a person who prays who had this fellowship with God every time this will be easy for you to build an altar of prayer wherever you are, wherever you go. Despite a busy time, hectic schedule, despite where you are, when you have an altar in your heart, it will help you to have an altar at the marketplace, at the school, you see the problem we have. Many times you will find these young men, young girls, they love God when they are, they are with their parents. But when they go to college and they remain there, they they will change their habits. They will change their attitude because of this you call the pair pressures. Or they will tend to look like others. They will tend to do like others. Why these young men, young people, they are easily attracted by the wicked people, the evil people, it's because they have never, never, never put the altar of God in their heart. If you have this altar, you have habits to pray every time. If you are a, a praying young man, you will continue even at school, at college, you will continue even at your uh, working place. But if you don't have this altar of prayer in your heart, it will be easy to other people to put their altar into your heart. Then you will follow them. Then you will be like them. You will change your attitude. You will behave like them because you don't have this order of prayer in you. So the secret to build the to build the, the, the altar of prayer at marketplace is first of all to have this altar in your heart. So Nehemiah was in exile country. He was not in his home country. He went as an exile. But he connected with the God of Israel. He was always with God of Israel. Even though he was in the high position. He was working in the palace of the king. Remember, other Jewish people were not at the same level like Nehemiah. They were just the same people. 
Simple, simple people because they were refugees. They were exiled. But from those exiled people, God allowed Nehemiah to occupy a high level position in the foreign country. When Nehemiah go, went to that position, he did not corrupt his moral. He did not forget his God. He did not change his behavior. He did not conform to the world in which he was serving. Even the king did not influence Nehemiah to do what was against God. But Nehemiah, in his heart, he became an altar of prayer. He had this fellowship with God. Despite the high position. Despite the high position. He continued to serve God. He continued to pray God. He continued. But some of us, if we have a, a small position, we tend to forget God and to be influenced by those people whom we, we find there. It's easy to go astray when you don't have an altar of prayer in your heart. I exhort you to become an altar of prayer. So you will change the environment where you go. Otherwise, they will change you. Where you go at the marketplace your place of work, your school, we change you because inside, in you, there is not fire of God. There is not altar of God. But if you have this altar, it will be easy to put that fire at the marketplace because already you have fire inside in you. Praise Lord. So, when Nehemiah was talking with God, with the king. They had a long conversation. He did not change his way to do. He continued praying God, praying God, though he was talking to God. So, you may have this ability to talk to God when you are busy when you are working, when you are doing other things. Otherwise, we find people just following one way. You must have both ways. The ways that goes to the king and the ways that goes to God. Amen? Jesus actually said this. When the Sadducees and the Pharisees came to Jesus, they say, they show him the coin of silver. They say, who... The, 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 who, who do you think this silver belongs? Should, he, should we give taxes to, to, to Caesar? You see what Jesus say? Give Caesar. What belongs to Caesar? Give God. What belongs to God? At the same time, Jesus told people to follow Caesar. At the same time, to follow God. Give taxes to Caesar and give tithes to God. Don't just say, no, you see, I'm giving my taxes, though I cannot tithe to the church, you know. You must, if you have an altar of God in you, you will do both. Praise the Lord, you will do both. Because we have the fire of God inside us. Amen. L let's look at Paul. Paul in Acts chapter 16, 13, up to 15. Acts chapter 16, 13 to 15. The Bible say, and on the Sabbath day, we went out of the city. They went where? They went where? Where? To the river? This was like a, a, a plage. See? It was like a sea, seashore. To do what? To pray. This was not a temple. This was not a synagogue. 
they go outside of the city to the riverside where prayer was customarily made. You see, these people prayed outside the city, outside this temple, in the desert place where people normally don't use, don't pray. So they go there and they sat down and they spoke to the woman who met there. This woman. What was their job here? The women were there praying? No. It was not prayer. They were transacting their business. 14. Now a certain woman named Lydia heard us. She was a seller of purple from the city of Thyatira who worshipped God. The Lord opened her heart to heed the things spoken by Paul. And when she and her household were baptized, she begged us saying, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. So she persuaded us. These women were making business outside the city. Then Paul and his companions went there. They start preaching, speaking the word of God. This businesswoman called the Lydia from Tytyra, she heard the word that Paul was speaking. Remember, she was not at church. This lady was not at the synagogue. She was at the marketplace doing her business. She was selling. She was selling a garment, the purple one, the purple garment. At that time, it was very, very expensive. So she, she was an established businesswoman in that city of Philippi. Actually, this was Europe. At that time, this was Europe. And it was for the first time Apostle Paul to go to Europe to preach the word of God. The word of God has been preached in Asia Minor, which is Turkey today. But at that time, Europe had never, never heard about Jesus. So it was for the first time Paul, the, angel, the, 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 the voice of God has told him to go to Europe also to preach about Jesus. So the first thing Paul did because there was no churches in Europe she went to the marketplace where people were selling buying, selling imagine someone goes to, 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 to the market and they start saying Jesus is good, Jesus let us pray let, let, us, let us sing, let us pray, let us worship God some people will think that you are a mad person but he knew that the word of God must be preached also at the marketplace. We must put the altar at the marketplace. By praying, by preaching, this business lady with, was touched by the word of God. Then she received Jesus. Because it was on the riverside of the, the, the city, she called her household, husband, children. Also they received Jesus and Paul the same day, baptized the whole house of Lydia. So, the church started from that day. Then Lydia told the Paul that, I have a big house. I'm, I'm a rich woman. Come to my home. Don't spend your money at hotel. They were missionaries. No support, no financial support. So, this lady supported them. They went to her home and they started the church. Actually, the church of Philippi was led by a woman. Paul ordained her as a bishop. You will find in the book of uh, Philippi chapter 4, when Paul is praising the ladies, the women, like Clementine, like, uh, um, um, like Clementine, like also uh, Apophia, not, not Apophia, um, oh, 
yes, fair, Foibe, and, and other, other ladies. Because th- these ladies were, were, were very, very powerful. The church of Philippi was led by a woman because the, the first, the first person to receive the missionaries were ladies at the marketplace. So it's our duty and our time to go to the marketplace to speak about Jesus. Speak about Jesus. You remember for the first time when I went to New York to preach, I went to preach to the marketplace. At that time, uh, Pastor Claudine was not yet a pastor. She was an evangelist. But at workplace, at Coning, with many, 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 um, uh, many employees, she, she had established the, 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 the altar of prayer. So they have time to pray with those intellectuals, those inventors, people who invent things. You see, Coning is a big corporation in America that, 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 uh, uh, that invent many things in, in, all over the world. So I went there to preach there, even to give um, a speech before many people, distinguished people. But how did I go there? I went there because our sister had put a note of prayer at the marketplace. So where you are working, at your place of work, please make a note of prayer. Don't go just to school, going and coming back. Put a note of prayer there. At your office, at your business place, just put a marketplace there. May the Lord enable you and bless you to put the marketplace wherever you are. God bless you and let us pray together. Just stand up and pray. May the Lord use you mightily in this season so you can do tremendous, tremendous work. Thank you, Jesus. Dear Lord, we come before you. We thank you. For your Holy Spirit that we enable us, Lord, to do great things. To change environment. To change season and time. To change the altars of Baal into the altar of God. Like a Gideon when he changed this altar and he built your altar. Help us, Lord, at the marketplace to build altars wherever we are, wherever we go. Help us, Jesus. Bless everyone. Bless every woman, every man, every son, every daughter. Lord, to be able to build an altar. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.